A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus took Peter, James, and John his brother and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with them. And then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make you three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate, and they were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. And as they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Father Francis with you on this second Sunday of Lent. Glory to Jesus Christ and glory to him forever. Well, I don't know if you can tell, (laughs) but uh, we got a little dusting of snow last night, early this morning, and so it's kind of brightened everything up. And it's actually quite uh, lovely, quite beautiful. Uh, Maybe what I'll do is uh, maybe pan around so you can kind of uh, see uh, what's uh, going on here. Uh, But uh, so today, uh, oh, it's cold out here. (laughs) I was trying uh, a little bit, a little while ago to try and um, get my drone. I have a drone and I was hoping to kind of get a beautiful uh, aerial photography of this, you know, beautiful uh, newly fallen snow. And unfortunately, I think it's actually a little bit too cold out here to be flying the drone. It's almost five o'clock. Wow. Yeah, the days are the days are definitely getting longer. Uh, but it's 28 degrees out here. Not that that's a bad thing. It's a wonderful thing. I, I kind of like the cold. But uh, anyway, so uh, I, I had all these plans that I wanted to do for this video. Uh, I really wanted to make it really nice and beautiful and kind of uh, ethereal. Uh, Because we are talking about the Lord's, um, uh, um, I can't even think of the name now. Uh, I feel like Joe Biden here. (laughs) Uh, His transfiguration. Uh, So anyway, uh, I've just been, the last hour, I've just been kind of helter-skelter because it's like, when you're into photography and videography, one of the things that you know is that this time, right this moment, this is the beauty time, and I need all the help I can get, uh, for filming, uh, photo, photography, and, and video. Uh, you want that beautiful natural light, the beautiful natural light uh, to shine through uh, because it, it, is, it just has the, I don't know what it is about that light. Uh, I'm sure a, a real uh, photographer or videographer, uh, somebody who's really, really a professional about lighting, uh, could probably tell you why, uh, but it's just absolutely beautiful this time of day, either early, early in the morning or, or in, the, in this wonderful, this, this almost magical moment that I'm standing here right now. And sometimes, you know, I guess it ties in with, with the transfiguration because sometimes you can't capture that, you know, you can't make it into a Kodak moment. Um, and when you try to do that, it becomes a Maalox moment. Uh, I'm kind of dating myself here with my, uh, with my uh, commercials and advertisements. But, uh, but there is something about um, just being present in the moment. And this is what the, the disciples, uh, I think, one of the lessons that they probably learn. Now, you have to understand, you know, when Jesus calls us uh, to follow him, Sometimes he calls us to follow him when it's not convenient, when maybe we're tired. (laughs) Now, you have to think about this. The disciples have been probably walking with Jesus all day long. 
And what happens, they get to the, the mountain there, and probably most of them are just bushed. They're like, you know, you have you ever been on a hike and you finally find a place to sit down or you get back to where you started from and you're just hungry and tired and you just sit down in a seat, a chair, and you just say, I'm done. And you say, I'm, I'm, I'm spent. <clears throat> and so, uh, you know, I can imagine that most of them, if not all of them, were like, okay, Lord, we're tired. Let's get something to eat and kind of rest and just, you know, go to bed. And then Jesus says, hey, guys, guess what? I'm going up the mountain. Anybody want to come with? And the, the three tired Peter, James, and John guys, they probably looked at one another and said, they probably just shook their heads and probably didn't say anything. They just said, they probably just got up on their feet and said, whatever you say, Jesus. And they just went up the hill. And they were just probably taking one foot in front of the other. And they're just like, are we there yet? (laughs) So I can just imagine that kind of uh, experience for the disciples. But they're following. They're following. And it's those kinds of moments where the Lord then begins to reveal. And we are told again that, you know, this incredible uh, transfiguration occurs, that the light is so, so brilliant. Uh, I think the only thing maybe, you know, you could compare it with, and although it's a kind of a terrifying analogy, is probably like a nuclear explosion. I know that's very, very frightening to maybe even uh, use that kind of analogy, but it's, it was probably something akin to that because we are told, are we not, that they were terrified, they were afraid. Um, and so sometimes I think what, we, what, what I wanted to say is that, um, you know, God calls us to follow him, and that's all true. But sometimes we kind of we kind of think like, okay, I can do this, Jesus. It's like a little kid, and you try and show them how to tie their shoe. And, and, and you show them a couple of times, but then you go, they're not getting it. They just don't get it. And so you try to help them, and what happens is that they, that they go, no, 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 I can do it, I can do it. And you kind of go, okay, okay. You know, you let them do it. Try to let them do it. And I think that's some way it is, it is, it is with us in the spiritual life. You know, God calls us, and, and sometimes we get this mistaken notion, and I know I do, that, well, I've got to do this now. I've been tasked, I've been commissioned, I've been ordered, you know, by Jesus, I've been invited, whatever word you want to use, but then I kind of like try to do it under my own power. And I think the message here today, really, and if you listen to the readings, it's, it's really not about, you know, our power. Uh, you know, he calls us true, but he also equips us and he, he infuses us with his own divine grace and power to do what he calls us to do. And the other lesson I would say is that sometimes we don't sometimes find, you know, a lot of times people will say, well, you know, uh, I'm a Christian, I'm a Catholic, and I go to Mass, and I, I try to be a good person, and I give to the poor, and, and you know, my, my, my spiritual life or my walk with God doesn't seem to be any better than it was, you know, 20 years ago. Well, maybe it's because, like uh, Peter, ba- Peter, James, and John, again, and we have to remember that all, not all the disciples got to experience this marvelous uh, phenomenon of our Lord's transfiguration. It was only the ones who kind of said, okay, I'm tired, but you know what? I'm going to follow Jesus regardless. Um, sometimes <clears throat> I've kind of fi- I kind of figured that out a little bit. I'm, I wish I could say I'm a lot better at it than I used to be. But, um, but sometimes, you know, when I'm doing what I'm doing as a priest, uh, as a pastor, um, sometimes, you know, people say, Father, you know, you, you need a break, you know, or aren't you tired or, you know, you've got to be exhausted, you know, and I'll say, look, <laughs> I do my best work when I'm tired. And I think that's, there's a little bit of nugget of truth in that because why? Because I realize that I'm spent. I'm done here, you know. Uh, anything else that is, is motivating me and animating me, it's all the grace of God. And that's a good thing when I'm being under the grace of God, okay? So, uh, you know, I think that's why Peter, James, and John were given this rare privilege uh, to hear, to see Jesus transfigured. And again, he's illuminated. 
uh, by this wonderful experience of witnesses of, of, of Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets. They're basically saying, hey guys, you've been trying to follow us, essentially, Moses and Elijah, you know, through the commandments, through the law of Moses. But here's the one it's all about. Keep your eyes on him. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And uh, so I think it's just wonderful. And then the last thing I'd just share with you, oh man, I wish I could get this uh, on. (laughs) Sometimes you just have to enjoy, you have to appreciate the moment for what it is. You know, no camera, no video equipment is going to capture what I'm seeing right now. It's just absolutely beautiful and it's pristine. It's, you know, nature and all of its beautiful splendor. Uh, and then the last thing I said I was going to say real quick and quick in closing uh, <clears throat> is that, um, you know, when the, when the, when the manifestation is, is, has been completed and they've seen the transfiguration now, you know, Eliza, uh, uh, Elijah and Moses, you know, they go. The thing I really like about it is, you know, that we're seeing these apostles, these disciples, then they're scared, they're afraid. And, and you can see, and I love this line, it says, and Jesus touched them and said, you know, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And I think that sometimes, you know, uh, in our moments when we are afraid, when we are discouraged, when we're kind of confused and lost, if we just kind of not try to do anything, you know, Peter says, oh, we can make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, one, for, you know, it's like, just don't do anything. Just experience it. I think that's all Jesus wanted them to do is just, I'm trying to reveal who I am. Don't try and figure it out. Don't try and analyze it. Don't try and, you know, um, you know, uh, whatever it is that you try to do, that we try to do sometimes to figure it out. It's not like a, Jesus is not a Rubik's Cube. He's not an equation to be figured out. But he is someone to experience. And that's why we have the holy season of Lent. So we get a chance to maybe not be rushing around and being helter-skelter and uh, this way and that, but just experiencing something that, you know, God wants to share with us. And sometimes, yes, sometimes we have to kind of maybe go just a little bit further. You know, not much, but maybe just a little bit further so he can reveal uh, himself to us because he longs to do that. So anyway, I hope you got something out of that this week. Uh, May God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you. Thanks for watching.